how many laps are we going to do? Four. What? Oh, four instead four. of ten? No, you guys were we're, set. To we're ten. scheduled for ten. Uh, let me see. Were, were you? Yes, yes, you were. The juniors were. We're going eight. to, we, we just have to play it by ear. I mean, it's, we don't know what's going to happen down at that end. So four laps. Four laps. Lap cards are on your right. Okay. okay. On my whistle. Welcome back to A Faster Me. We are out here at the Rosina Ranch Circuit Race. And just to offer some clarification to why our race was cut short, we were out here with some wins, so we were the first group to go. Some juniors went off a little bit before us, but they just wanted to see if the conditions were safe enough to continue racing or if maybe they needed to be canceled for the day. So. So here we are facing some pretty heavy wind gusts. We're in a wind tunnel here and there was a few sections that were a little bit unsafe. I think the wind for us was a little bit less than later on in the day. It didn't feel um, completely unsafe, but it definitely added a additional element that was not so fun to deal with. So Yeah, when she says a little wind or wind gust, it's like well over 30 mile per hour winds uh at some times i mean you in fact one kid got completely blown over to where he crashed so yeah it was there was some definite uh danger out there at some points it made the drafting <laughs> very different and a little bit um scary because just the the wind could blow somebody inches or even a foot or two off the line that they are on so right here it looks like i'm would normally be in the draft i'm getting no wind protection because the wind is coming um from my left here and so i'm virtually getting no drafting benefit at this point yeah honestly this would be the time to echelon if everybody knew how to echelon but even then, um, at the high speeds, it was pretty dangerous. So it, it's not a probably wasn't a good thing to try to echelon for the first time. And so I should have mentioned it a little earlier, but Laura is joining me for her second race. So she came out. She kind of was off the front, leading the setting the pace in in the beginning. So um, here we are hitting this first uphill climb, and it is brutal. Yeah, along with the uphill that touches 9% there for a second, um, this is into a really stiff headwind. We're talking 20 plus, 30 miles per hour, and you see how many watts Ellen's doing, and they're barely going 11 miles per hour. Yeah, it, it was definitely painful. Also, a totally different mentality from thinking of racing for 10 laps or 20 miles, which would be over an hour, to four laps virtually the time or less than the time of a normal 30 minute crit that that we do so i was kind of trying to think of how how your strategy goes and really it's just you need to go pretty much as hard as you can for this four lap brutal <laughs> yeah <laughs> situation no, yeah i'm pretty sure it was the toughest eight <laughs> eight miles you've ever done <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, so... And that's Lisa Mohammed right there in front of us from Major Motion, uh, defending state champion. Yeah, we are suffering here on the, this hill coming into the first U-turn. Yeah, so basically the course is an out and back. Uh, it's one, one mile or 1.1 mile one direction with the U-turn, and then uh, you kind of go back up to the start-finish line, and then there's another U-turn at the top there. Last year there was a different type of brutal conditions. It was really, really wet. There was a crash here on the first turn. Um, there, take the turn a little bit tighter than the ideal line. It wasn't too bad though. I mean, if you saw Lisa's turn, she was obviously way too tight entering. Tight entering. That's why she went wide on the exit. But uh, you typically want to take a late apex there and you end up doing a good job uh, the more you've done it. And um, shout out to Nick for giving those clinics and the U-turns in the clinics and, you know, obviously it shows. 
So here I, I pass Lisa and, and I tell her we can reel them in if we work together. We're both pretty strong riders in this downhill section. I know we can make up a lot of ground on, on some of the women in the front. But with these windy conditions and a little bit of lack of communication of how to work together and sometimes our passing speeds were a little bit faster, we struggled to kind of get, get our groove to, to work together. And, and again, the drafting benefit so there's marie from from go fast and that is not marie oh, from sorry. go fast <laughs> I was, she, she's coming so yeah i actually uh, don't remember that young lady's name i believe she may have a sister now if you saw there they almost collided that's from the wind that's the wind and this section is so fast almost 40 miles per hour if you're pedaling hard at the same time that the wind gust comes it can take your front wheel right from under you yeah so that was a little bit uh crazy there's some juniors that were passing pretty quickly there and here you can see I'm you know doing 27 miles an hour with not too much effort it's gonna get a little bit faster here and this is the uphill that goes back to the start finish line and this is also again in a brutal headwind here it's kind of, kind of coming off from the right side here so there's a little part where the wind's at your back and the speed gets up really high and then you're right back into a crosswind again. Yeah, I've got my laps all, all confused, I think. There's Marlena. Um, she got her first podium, second place. Great job to her. And this, this uphill definitely didn't hurt as bad as I remember it hurting last year. So going back the other direction is the real suffering on that uphill with the, the headwind. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, we both did this race last year and it just, it felt different. The course felt easier this year, but the conditions obviously were worse with that wind. You see, Lisa took a tight entry again there and then had to re-correct around the turn. This is just a little technical point there. What you want to do is turn late, you, so you want to stay wide and stay straight longer and turn late as late as possible, hit a late apex so you'll be um, picking up speed um, as you exit the corner there. And Lisa does a great job of catching the group in front of us and it takes me a little bit longer to catch back up and again I'm just kind of battling with myself of how much you want to put in the dig to try to catch the group and then the drafting benefit with this strong wind coming from the left side is just hard to know kind of the best strategy. Yeah, it's definitely threw a lot of people off. I mean, I mean, I think you guys' race was great. Our race is a little more complicated, but um, you guys put in a hard effort. I mean, your speed was the same as mine in the Cat 4 race, Cat 4 open race. And, um, you know, uh, you guys raced, it was a good race for you guys. You guys raced well and raced hard in these conditions. Yeah, I was disappointed to not have a few more laps to, to try to chase a few people down. And congratulations to Feline. She was off the front almost immediately and just kind of did a solo breakaway victory in, in these conditions. So just great job to her. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> this was soul crushing right here. This little headwind climb was just soul crushing. You can see how people are struggling. It doesn't matter. Some are spinning, some are using a heavier gear. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It all equals under 10 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was in my small gear and, you know, just still my cadence is, oh gosh, in the 50s there. Yeah. Yeah, that that's pretty bad. Yeah, and look at the junior. He was, he was probably in the 30s for a second. So, yeah, it's definitely brutal there. I did not realize it hits 9% coming up there. It just didn't seem that steep. So it's 9% for just a second, but that 9% kills all your momentum. So here's where we pick up Marie. I was off by, by a lap, watching it a little small. I, I got my times confused, but here, I sat in a little bit here, debated if I, you know, should have or not, but trying to just think that the three of us could really work together and bring back the, the group is what I was thinking. Yeah, well, they're not too far in front of you right now. I mean, 
it's this is a really deceptive course and with the speed variations i mean you're slow as six miles per hour sometimes but then you're as fast as 40. so there's a really big accordion effect with the riders around you a rider can be almost half a mile in front of you um and you can catch them or you know someone might be 100 yards behind you and a second or two later they're going by you that's just how the effect of the wind was and just who can hold momentum at different times and it's a little bit different the normal conditions would favor maybe a smaller rider up the hill but with this wind it, it does not so yeah i mean it's it's hit and miss i mean yeah, it just depends on how much wind is there. Yeah, lighter riders get affected by the wind, sometimes a little more, getting pushed around. And sometimes you need a little more power and depends on how the aerodynamics and all that kind of stuff works. But, you know, it, definitely the bigger riders, especially in wind like this, have an advantage when the speed gets up. Yeah, so here's where we're going to try to do a little work together. <laughs> Marie bumps the cone there a little bit and and it goes down yeah we'll try to point it out on the next turn but everyone's turning a little too tight right there and that slows your speed down a lot there was a shadow there um, from the road sign and really you shouldn't start your turn in until you hit that shadow that's how wide you should be and how late you should turn it's good speed here by you i'm picking up good momentum yeah and here we're gonna try to start working together um i did practice going a little bit wider on my turns and I think I used a whole lot less effort than I have in previous races. I'm here, Marie's going to go by to take her pull. We were a little bit, you know, I think going different times, but I did not stay on her wheel. The effort was a little hard. Yeah, that's the thing about um, when you're trying to work together and take pulls. You can't accelerate too hard when you're passing the person for when it's your time to pull. It's a gradual acceleration. You're really just trying to maintain the same speed. And as you can see, the wind is pushing them to the left again. So that can be just kind of dangerous at, you know, again, 40 miles per hour and if someone gets pushed into your line. So here I, I was feeling like I hadn't taken a single pull and I was the one who suggested working together. So I'm gonna go by and try to take a pull here. I think at some point, I flick my elbow and get over to the right, which I can't remember. Do you, are you supposed to go into the wind? Yes, you are supposed to rotate into the wind so the person coming forward or pulling is shielded for the wind. So whenever you're doing a pace line and you're rotating off, you want to rotate toward the wind. That's what I thought. So that's what I did. And so here Lisa comes by and then... Yes, and she should rotate to the right and then Marie would come by on the left and she'd be protected by the wind as she's moving forward. And I didn't see Marie come by, so I decided to go, and I don't know if you can hear it there, but Lisa gave a sigh, and, and I'm pretty sure I heard in her head, like, oh no, I'm done with this hill, or some, <laughs> something to that effect, you know, because uh, there was a few gear shifts, and, and I'm pretty sure I heard her talking inside her head. Yeah, that wasn't a uh, sigh. <laughs> That was her lung popping right there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she was waiting to exhale. <laughs> so, but yeah, so even here on this U-turn, you, you want to stay wide, closer to the white line there, and turn late, probably after that sewer main. So you'd be heading this way, which is, that's a pretty good turn that you did there, but even a little bit later would be, you know, a little better, a little more optimal line. So here we go, and it's interesting. I like the camera angle. Um, or maybe camera on my head versus the bike because you get a few different angles sometimes looking side to side or down but it is also interesting your eyes can see a whole lot more there's times I know I look back and you don't see hardly a shift on the camera so yeah your eyes can definitely see more in the peripheral than than what the you know it appears yeah, I'm not sure if anybody noticed, <laughs> but on her, the last couple videos, the camera's been on her head and not on the bike anymore, like the, it was at the beginning of the year, and all of last year, the camera was on her handlebars. So now it's, they're on her helmet, just like my, uh, my camera angle is. Um, for her, it was due to necessity. Me, I have arrow bars, but for her, um, yeah, the mount was pinching the cables and ended up cutting her DI2 and, you know, 
So just to avoid that, we're going to run it on the head or underneath the, um, the head unit. And we became aware of that in the little near um, mishap that I had at CVR with the bike kind of going over and the near crash. So yeah, now it's just time to, you know, try to run down people and see how many people you can catch. It's, this is a tough spot. I mean, obviously you have people behind you and you're trying to work with them, but it's a tough spot to keep pushing when there's no one really in eyesight. Yeah, and I, I don't know, I have a weird <laughs> motivation in, in these spots. I, I like to work hard and kind of suffer by myself yeah. <laughs> in a weird, weird way, but the, this is kind of, I think, the benefit the, the, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but the, the type of race that benefits me to be able to kind of suffer and endure. I have um, sustained power that is pretty good. I don't have as much of the surgy efforts, but I can do a long, sustained, hard effort. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference of this, the toll this heel is taking. Um, with no riders in front of you right now, like you're doing some pretty decent watts, and it's just a struggle. It's just a struggle getting over this little hump. It sure was, but knowing, you know, two laps are down, have only about a, less than two laps to go, you really have to put in a hard effort because the race will be over very soon. Yeah, you can see on the other side there, I think that's Feline going by with the motorcycle and, you know, there's only, you're not really that far behind, it's just getting your momentum back up and they're going on a downhill part where you're going to uphill and just that gap opens and just doing the accordion effect there. Yeah, I think Feline, I think I counted, she has a good 30 seconds on the, the riders that are coming behind and for such a short race, that's an excellent effort by her. Yeah, that's a huge gap and that's one of the good things about crosswinds. Um, if you're able to attack, it's really hard to catch a person in the crosswinds. And so there's the group with a few juniors thrown in. Um, it is sometimes deceiving you. You don't know exactly who you're on the course with. You have to look at the number to see which group. So there's that shadow I was of. talking about with a turn in. Ellen runs across the shadow, turned in a little bit early, but that's a really excellent turn there. That's probably her best turn of the race so far. Um, but yeah, that's how you want to do it. You want to take a wide approach, a late turn in, and you'll be heading up the course once you hit the apex there. And there I was doing a good 300 watts, but it did not feel that hard. So I think there might be a little bit of a helping wind there, but mm -hmm. it definitely didn't feel nearly as hard as that hill where I was only doing like 250 or 275 coming up the other way. Yeah, and you got your speed up pretty fast too after making the U-turn. So. Yeah, definitely the wind is helping a little bit this way, but it's also a crosswind making it unstable. Yeah, there was two sections, one going downhill and one coming up, where there was just almost always a very strong gust that felt really unsafe. Yeah, it's funny that it, I don't know if the uh, viewers would be able to <laughs> tell that the wind is there other than the sound, because there's really no palm trees or anything up, up high, no flags or anything to see the wind. They're just going to have to take our word for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, we're going to be coming into the last lap now, I think. I believe there might be a rider up front now, and you know, just a little speck right under the water tower there, turning, turning right. Or do my eyes deceive me? I don't know, it's, it's much harder to see on the video than in real life. You can see people there and they don't seem that far away on this little video. It seems like they're real far away. No, you can definitely see there's riders right there coming, you know, in front of you now. So, I just have someone in my sights and I'm just thinking I'll go as hard and catch them as soon as I can. Do you know who's up there or...? Not sure at this point. Oh, that was a pretty hard weave there. I don't know. 
if that was a gust of wind also with that person in front of you weed pretty hard to the left so yeah it's just it's just brutal conditions and yeah they're weaving all over the place i don't know if he's trying to hold the wheel or if it's just the wind blowing that rider around i think those might be juniors there yeah yeah two juniors i think i saw jessica just in front of the juniors too um and jessica's in your category rides for go fast yeah, I was hoping, I still might be a little delusional, hoping to get to somebody and work together to bring people in, but I think those ships are starting to sail the, yeah, they're, <laughs> the they're last long, lap. <laughs> long gone, especially with one lap to go. You only have two miles, and it's still stretched out. Um, I mean, it's not impossible, obviously, um, but catching someone would have to be on your own. I don't think you have time to coordinate, work together with anyone at this point. I think, is that Jessica in front? So yes, I'm gonna try to get to her. And it seems like we were going about the same pace for a chunk of time, but I'm slowly gaining some ground. And she did a great job staying with that front group much longer than I was able to. I think that's, that's that's where I need to grow is is doing the harder effort early on to stay with the group longer. Yeah, well, it's just different type of race, also. I mean, yeah, that hill was a separator, and I mean, obviously, tell, judging by your watch, you did a hard effort up that hill. So, just the other girls had a little more, and were able to navigate that first hill faster. And I think I say something like, "Work together if you want to, or if you can," you know. Sometimes people are able to, sometimes they're not. I tried to just keep my pace steady going by her and not do a hard acceleration. Just two people working together is a little bit better than being in the wind all by yourself. Yeah, I can't tell them those are probably juniors in front of you again. But yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> I mean, you can just tell how hard this hill is, how much it drains you. You can see in your shadow there how, how hard you're working. And, and by your heart rate, you're, uh, you're hardly ever in the 170s, I don't think. Yeah, so this is a good effort. I am trying to see my miles per hour. I, I know I dropped to seven at least once or twice, and I think this last lap I only saw eight, so I went a little faster on this last lap than even a few previous laps. Yeah, it's just it's just so tough. Look at <laughs> the struggle on all these drivers. It's, yeah. Yeah, standing up was super scary. I did it once or twice and a wind gust came. I think the first lap I saw Laura stand up and, and I stood up. It was at that point of the hill where you're almost to the top to do the, the work to get over and it was just unsafe to be standing. Well, yeah, obviously it raises your center of gravity, knocks you off balance a little bit, and there's more wind to catch. You know, you definitely want to lower center of gravity and stay with a little bit more aerodynamics if, if possible. Mm -hmm. The wind said, sit yourself down. Yeah. And I think this might be your best time doing this U-turn, but as we approach it, um, maybe I can explain better what I'm trying to say here. But if you uh, approach this U-turn to the right, and this one especially because it's uphill once you make the turn, you don't have to use your brakes as much because the, um, the terrain is gonna slow you down. And now you're a lot closer to the girls right there too. So maybe a couple more laps, you may have had a chance to run some people down, but it is what it is, there's only four laps. Um, it was supposed to be 20 miles and it was cut down to eight. But that uh, sign right there, the green sign, there's a shadow. If you start your turn in after hitting that shadow, that's a much better line. And that's what you want to do is turn in late through the shadow there and see when you hit the cones now you're already pointing upfield or up the road and that's a better um, uh, navigation of that u-turn and of course you're up to almost 20 miles per hour again already 18. and much less taxing on on, on your legs doing it over and over especially if there were 10 laps yeah it saves a lot of effort Right, because if you go in too tight, you have to slow down a lot more, and then you have to either stand or something and use a lot of power coming out of that turn. I think I see another rider up in front of me now, and I'm just going to hope I can maybe catch somebody else before the, the line. Yeah, and this is what we were talking about earlier. Like, someone can be so far in front of you, 
and it just seems like there's no hope and a couple seconds later you might be passing them and it's just it's just weird like that oh this was a junior and i was you know hoping that they stayed i, I gave plenty of space but still said on your left and I'm going to see one more person, I think. And yeah, there's someone up there turning right now, but... And yeah. I'm going to, you know, delusionally think maybe I can catch them. But there's very little time left. Yeah, <laughs> like zero time. It's just a couple hundred yards. I, I, was, yeah. I was really wanting a few more laps to... Try to reel people in. <laughs> yeah, and shout out to uh, Nick Humby. He's our um, race director, and he has the KOM for this the sprint finish here at uh, 23 seconds and like 36 miles per hour, I think, over like 0.2 of a mile or something. So, I mean, that's a great finish. Yeah, I went 10 seconds faster than I did last year, and I still am at like 44 seconds or something like that. Yeah. But here I give a a solid effort. I gave a pretty long sprint and... You made up a lot of ground on her. I mean, obviously you can't catch her, but you did make up a lot of ground. And, and there you have it. The 8 mile windy Rosina Ranch race. Yeah, great job. Uh, that was a 6th place finish for Ellen. So yeah, another top 10 and great job. Two top 10s in a row. Keep it going.